This is the Dofer A106-6 XP filter. The XP stands for expander, as in Oberheim expander, and it has the same nice smooth sound that you would expect from an expander or Matrix 12. It has very willing resonance, but it stays nicely in control most of the time. No crazy out of control squelches and squonks, just a lot of wetness and oscillation. Shorten up the decay here. The main party trick of the A106-6 is that it has 16 different filter modes, inspired by the 15 available inside the Oberheim expander. It's based on the same Curtis chip and uses different wiring combinations to create these different outputs. In this overview movie, I'm going to focus mainly on the features of the XP filter. And in the other movies, we'll play around with these different modes and explain their differences, and also give you a chance to hear them. Close that down for now, and stop our arpeggio. Like most Dope for filters, it has one audio input with a level control, and usually somewhere around 6 or 7 is Unity, but it can go into a very mild overdrive. Let's go ahead and get this playing again. Here's just a little bit of buzz up top, but it's pretty gentle as far as overdrive goes. As with most Dope for filters, F CV1 is frequency control voltage 1. It goes straight to the cutoff, it has no attenuator, and is set up to be 1 volt per octave. Therefore, if you want to use this filter as an oscillator, and you can set half of these filter modes into oscillation, you would bring your pitch voltage into FCV1. I'm using it right now to give myself full envelope effect. And it adds to the cutoff frequency. FCV2, control voltage 2, has its own attenuator. So if you want to knock down the envelope amount, or if you want to bring in something like an LFO, or even another oscillator for FM, I'd recommend plugging that into FCV2. Indeed, let me grab a triangle out of one of my oscillators here, plug into FCV2, hold a note, and increase the modulation amount. And in that case, I'm actually FMing the filter cutoff. I'm not raising the filter itself. Here's the filter all the way down with full modulation. Compared with raising, the filters cut off frequency. So that's another option for that filter. I'll pull that for now. It does have resonance that can go into feedback. I'll turn my level all the way down. Sound a note. It's silent right now, but I can put this into a nice sine wave oscillation. And as you can see from the spectra display, the four pole low pass output, which is what I'm using for this movie, is a very pure sine wave, just one harmonic present. The different outputs do indeed have different harmonic combinations. You see a bit of third harmonic present there. Just a hair of second and third there. More second harmonic there. Stronger harmonics on all fronts there. And I should note now that some of these outputs have much lower output levels. Different wirings for different modes have different amounts of noise and gain in this filter. That's why I tend to take the output, after it's gone through my Mordax data, into an amplifying channel on a mixer, such as my Levitate here, so I can increase it if I need to. I'll put this back into our full pole low pass for now, turn the resonance down, and turn off our oscillators. The resonance does indeed have a control voltage input. That means you can do things such as spike the resonance on the start of a note, or suppress the resonance during the start to have more resonance later on. Let me give some examples of that. I'll get our little arpeggio playing here again. I'm going to bring our envelope over into this resonance control, and have it just spike resonance just on the attack. As the note dies away, the amount of resonance dies away as well. If I had just pure resonance, 
would have that interesting, kind of throaty, kind of guttural wet sound for the whole note. By enveloping the resonance, I can make the sustain a bit clearer, a bit more pure. Or I could go the other direction. I could say on a sustained note, I want to tune in resonance. Go ahead and even play an individual note. But suppress the resonance on a given note by putting an inverse envelope into this to turn down the resonant amount during the initial attack, then go back to full resonance during the sustain. So there's a clean attack, but then it goes to resonance during the sustain, compared to that at the very start if I have resonance throughout the entire note. Finally, there's a switch down here to go between two different modes per output jack. You'll see the legend here, L is low pass, H is high pass, B is band pass, A is all pass, N is notch. The number one, two, three, or four is the number of poles or the multiplier of how many six dB per octave the cutoff is. So when I'm using four L, I'm using a low pass filter with four poles and four times six or 24 dB per octave cutoff. All the filters to the right setting, when the switch is at the right and on the right side of the jacks, can go into full oscillation and be used as an oscillator. All the options on the left side do not go into full oscillation. So you can crank the resonance all the way, and it won't quite break an oscillation, unlike the other direction, where the filter is oscillating all on its own. The nice thing about being presented all of these different outputs individually is you can go even beyond these 16 different modes and mix different modes with an external mixer to create even new combinations of filter response. Now that you've got an overview of this filter, in the next few movies, let's dive into the different modes and how they sound, starting with the low pass modes. <laughs> 